All right, so welcome back. So probably on every top 10 list of things that a guy needs to buy before he's 30 is a good pair of leather shoes or leather boots. You know, and there's all kinds out there, and I mean, you gotta find what's best for you. I have wore boots for a long time growing up, and you know, I picked up a pair of Red Wings, and so, you know, it's time to take care of them, so here we are, let's get going, you know. What, what makes a, a good pair of leather shoes or leather boots? In addition to the materials that the upper is made out of, which you want full grain cowhide, um, you know, the, the next biggest thing that you're going to look for is uh, the kind of welt that your boots are made out of or have underneath them when they're constructed. So typically the most common welt uh, that we have out there uh, for high quality boots and shoes would be the Goodyear welt. And so what that means ultimately is uh, you know that the, the bottom is actually stitched to the up, the lower is stitched to the upper. Um, what that does is it enables you in the future, after your boots or your shoes get worn out uh, and the soles start to come loose, is that you can get them restitched. You know, so ultimately what that does for you is it enables you. To have a pair of boots that's going to last you the rest of your life uh, as long as you take care of the uppers. Uh, so, there are some other kinds of soles that are out there. Uh, Blake Stitch is another one, and it's going to look real similar to a Goodyear welt where you're going to have the stitching on the top, except that stitching on the top and the Blake Stitch is going to be fake. It'll actually be stitched uh, underneath only. Those can also be taken care of. Uh, it's just not quite as durable, as good as a Goodyear welt. Goodyear welt doesn't mean it's the, the material that the sole is. It's not a Goodyear sole, although you can get Goodyear soles, Vibram soles. Uh, this particular one here on these red wings are, are Vibrams. Uh, these are the uh, Red Wing Ranger. And it's a particular style that has been around for a really, really long time. Uh, has proven itself in the mines and has proven itself since then just being a high quality boot. I love these things. The other really good thing about having a pair of boots that you can continue to wear over and over again is, uh, you know, I actually get them resold and resold and resold. I got a pair of boots somewhere in the house. Uh, man, I've had them things for over 20 years um, and you know what happens is the more that you wear them, I, I had to think about that for a while didn't I? Uh, so the more that you wear them, the more that the upper becomes accustomed and form fitted to your foot and so you put it on man it feels good I don't know what kind of shoes boots that you wear but I'd love to hear about them down in the comments below so there are a lot of ways and a lot of things uh, that have been around for a long time to take care of boots. Uh, you know, my dad was in the leather business, and still is, uh, but you know, he got back in the, into the leather business, you know, a really long time ago, uh, before I was born. And he uh, had moved to El Paso, working for Tangy Leather at the time, and Ended up moving over to another company, um, and one of his customers in El Paso was El Paso Salary. Now, El Paso Salary traces its roots going all the way back to uh, the 1800s. You know, back in back in El Paso, they had, uh, one of their prizes of fame was making a holster rig. Or John Wesley Harden. John Wesley Harden, of course, was a, a gunslinger in the western town of El Paso and uh, kind of claimed fame there. Uh, you know, and then over the years, you know, uh, ended up being owned by Bobby McNellis uh, by the time that I got to work for him. And Bobby McNellis was a character man. He really was uh, a really good salesman and he knew his business, that's for sure. 
And so, you know, up at Austin Saturday, it uh, made a lot of holsters uh, and rigs for Western movies and uh, law enforcement, Texas Rangers, the Marshals, local uh, law enforcement, uh, all kinds of rigs for everybody from all different kinds of walks of life. And so I got some working for him. Uh, it was really fascinating, man. That the guys that he had out in the shop, man, they were just, they were so good at what they did. The carving and, and the precision, man. These dudes were, man, they were artisans. And I certainly learned a lot from them. I don't know, just a little, little piece of grass. Um, and one of the things uh, that Bobby had his guys doing there uh, when they were making the rigs, his primary means of finishing his leather work was using peanut oil. Uh, and so what he would do is he would uh, take the, all his belts or his holsters out back, and you know, if they were gonna be dyed black or something, if somebody wanted a, a natural finish, he would take uh, out into the sun and he would put a coat of peanut oil on them and then he'd let it sit out in the sun. And so as the sun began to set into the leather and it began to cure, uh, he'd go out, you know, he'd put another coat and another coat and another coat until he got it to finish exactly what he was looking like and then he'd seal it. Uh, but that peanut oil actually enabled, uh, you know, just a nice red finish, dark reddish brown finish on his products and it was amazing. Uh, what I'm using right now is uh, it's just some mink oil. It's just mink oil. It just happens to be what I have right now. Uh, you know, you could use uh, neat foot oil, uh, and you know, there's some other conditioners and, and products you can use. I generally don't uh, polish my boots or shoes uh, unless they're black, and then kind of kind of have to maintain it. Uh, so I'm just going to use some some mink oil here, which is just going to get in to the leather, and it's going to help soften it up. Uh, you know, you'll find some people out there who who don't like using natural oils uh, because they will claim that the natural oils, let me set this one right there as I work on the lift boot, uh, that the natural oils will end up making your leather rot. And I suppose to a certain degree that there is some truth to that, uh, but you know, uh, you know, I remember growing up, uh, my dad in his shop had an old, old saddle. Man, this thing, it was probably built uh, in the 1870s, 1880s, somewhere in there, just a really long time ago. And it had this beautiful finish. Oh my gosh, it was, it was amazing. Um, and I can tell you one thing is for certain, that the only thing that had been on that saddle its entire life was natural oils. Natural oils. So you know, everything that you put on a boot or a shoe is gonna have pros and cons, you know, that's no doubt. I'm not gonna argue that point. Um, mink oil, as you can probably already tell, has a tendency to darken up the leather naturally. So if you're not looking to change uh, the finish at all on your boots or your shoes, you're, you're probably going to want to pick something different because Miko will certainly cause the, the tint to darken up just a little bit. Now, I, I personally like it. Uh, you can already tell probably the difference between up in uh, here uh, and then down where I've already put some Miko on and the kind of difference that it makes. Uh, you, know, you can already start to see it. You know, I, I just think it adds a, a depth of richness and natural uh, color and tint to it that I really, really like. What do you guys use out there? You know, and, and I, I'll tell you what, um, why, why, does, why does a guy need a good pair of shoes or boots, you know, by the time he turns 30, at least 30, you know, uh, you know, I, I talked to you about the, the Blake stitch that's out there. You know, most shoes that are made, um, you know, they just use a, an adhesive. You know, it's a concrete rubber cement uh, sole on them. You know, just the same as what's on your, your tennis shoes. But you can go buy a, you know, a pair of 
$125 shoes and they got garbage for souls. You know, and it's such a shame that you know, we get kind of conned into it. Uh, we, we buy fake leather products and garbage soles. And then all that happens is just a couple years down the road, we gotta go buy another pair of shoes. And man, you know, we could think and act a little more timeless uh, in our purchases. And then all of a sudden we end up with something that we can wear for the rest of our lives, the rest of our lives. I think these Red Wings, uh, you know, if you try to buy a, a new pair, you know, they're, they are a little more on the pricey side. You do have a lot of options out there. Red Wings aren't the most expensive uh, that are out there and they're not the least expensive, but you know, depending on what your budget is, you can, you can find a pair of shoes in your budget. It's going to be nice and have good high quality. Yeah, I've seen uh, some shoes and boots out there that are every bit of $600. I personally think that's kind of crazy. But you get what you pay for. Of course, back in the, in the 80s, we could go hop across the border and we could get a custom pair of boots made, like the boots I was telling you that I have in the house. And I think my dad was only paying, you know, probably a hundred bucks back in the day, eighty-five dollars, something like that. You know, but of course he was supplying his own leather, um, so we didn't have that cost involved. All right, I'm just about ready to butt this thing out. Go ahead and see what I said. You know, and all you need, you know, uh, depending on what kind of oil that you want to use, uh, you know, just a an old rag, you know, this is just a, a cut up skivvy shirt. <laughs> skivvy shirt, that probably sounds uh, crazy for people that, that may not, word may not be in the, their language. Uh, but you know, it's just an old, old t-shirt. That's all it is, just an old t-shirt. Um, all right, so let's get these things uh, buffed out. I'll just start, I guess I initially started with my right shoe. It doesn't really matter, I just like letting the Oil sit in there for a minute, let it get uh, soaked in. You just want to take your boot brush and buff it out. You'll see it start to, to sheen up a little bit. That's looking really good. So, you know, like I was saying, you know, there's just something a little more timeless, a little more classic, you know, with a good pair of leather shoes and leather boots. Uh, you know, it, it never goes out of style, you know. Maybe I'm Maybe I'm crazy, you know, growing up in the, in the 80s and 90s, you know, you know, in the days of parachute pants and all the kind of crazy styles, uh, you know, I never really got caught up in it. Uh, maybe it's because of where I, was, I lived, uh, or how I was brought up, and where I was brought up, uh, but I just never really got involved in, in, the, in the craziness of the, the styles. And you know, and like that, you know, a good pair of shoes or boots, man, just, they never go out of style. These things have been around, you know, for over 100, 150 years. This exact same style of shoe or boot has been around for such a long time. And guaranteed to continue to be in style. I think it kind of says something about the character of somebody who intentionally buys pair of shoes and boots that have to be taken care of, you know, and there's something therapeutic about it. Um, you have to take a few minutes, get them wiped down, get them taken care of, you do it with your hands, you know, you're rubbing in that oil or that conditioner in your hands, and it just takes a little bit of time, you have to be a little intentional about it, and, you know, when you can slow down, things life more so quick, and you can slow down, just take care of what you have, no matter how big or how little it is. You can just nothing but just a, a pair of boots. She really says something about her character, you know. So I'd love to hear down in the comments below, you know, what kind of shoes or boots that you prefer and why. You know, let some other people know what it is that you like and how do you take care of them. What kind of uh, Oil or conditioners do you use? Do you use nothing but dyes and polishes? 
these natural oils. What's been your experience? And I find that the, the more we talk about what we do, especially some of the older things, like taking care of the boots and shoes, we don't really talk about them very often. There's a time, really not all that long ago, and that's all we did was tell stories, you know? Here anymore, life is just so fast paced, moves so fast. Can't to the point where you know we just can't take it even just a few minutes to take care of what we have. And you know, these shoes, they may not last a few years if we didn't take care of them. You know, the other really good benefit about using oil on shoes and boots is it helps out with the uh, being a little more water resistant. You know, and, and as you are looking for a pair of shoes or boots, uh, start leasing these things up now. Uh, I'm gonna go these, I'm gonna do each one a little different. Uh, and we'll see which way you like and which way you do better. Everybody's a little picky on there. How they lace up their stuff sometimes. Uh, this one, you know, come up under. Some people go over, like a bridge over. I think it really matters. It's more of a preference, kind of like the kind of vehicle that you purchase. Uh, but you know, as you are looking for your boots and shoes, uh, you know, you want to also pay attention to the stitching, not just the sole and the welt and how it's put together, uh, but what is the interior? How is that constructed? You know, as you can see on the red wing man, I guess it's, you know, it's triple stitched. So I don't have to worry about stitching falling apart. So yeah, you know, like I was saying, you really just want to pay attention, you know, to the overall construction of your shoes and boots. Um, the welt is just a really good giveaway for how well the rest of the shoe or the boot is constructed. You know, if I have something that's just cemented in, uh, you know, odds are, the attention to detail in the rest of the product is probably not going to be there. All right, so there we go. Bridge over, bridge under. I don't know. You decide which one you like better. All right. So there you go. That's how Stoker takes care of his shoes and his boots. I uh, hope uh, we learned something in this conversation. Uh, you know, I'd love to hear down in the comments below, uh, you know, again, how you all are taking care of your stuff and what kind of shoes or boots that uh, you guys are wearing. Uh, I will leave a couple links down in the description uh, if you're looking to pick up uh, not only what I use now, but some other products that I talk about and have used over the past because they're all a bunch of really good products that are out there. Again, if you like the content of the video, uh, make sure you hit that like and subscribe, hit that notification bell so you can stay up to date on everything as we keep moving forward. And until then, we'll see you.